Well, it's great to be here. Um, we were the vision community was here back at the turn of the millennium for uh, our um, big European conference, and we discovered what a great place uh, Dublin was, and we had a great time in TCD, and it's uh, really good to be back again. So, um, let's start here. Computer science and illusion. So what I want to do is to um, tell you about some of the ideas that we've been playing with in the, the lab in Cambridge that do with how to think about images and how to deal with them uh, in, in software. And I thought what I'd do is try and uh, explain it also a little bit from the uh, motivated, if you like, of the psychological point of view. Psychologists love to think about um, uh, vision in terms of, uh, of illusions, and the illusions for them are a kind of a probe to, to see you know, what kinds of confusions the human brain make and what makes and what kinds of clues that gives about how images might be interpreted in the brain. And um, we've been kind of, uh, in, in many cases, inspired by that kind of thinking to make software which exploits these illusions as it were to fool the human brain uh, the vision part of it into being satisfied with what we get. So we can uh, play tricks, if you like, on the brain that um, in, in terms of um, adjusting and manipulating images and because of the understanding of these tricks they, those manipulations somehow look right. And in many cases these kinds of manipulations have um, ended up in uh, Microsoft software, some of, some of it in stuff that you can already buy and some in stuff that is on the way out. Uh, um, uh, to, to the shops and other stuff which is kind of more um, uh, futuristic and when we haven't quite persuaded our um, product counterparts that this is the right thing to do but we have great hopes for the future that, um, that uh, our technology will catch on. By the way, here is the lab that we have in, in uh, Cambridge. It's a um, you know, beautiful high-tech lab built right in the middle of the university. It's a great privilege not to be um, shuffled off to a science park. You know, science parks are all very nice, but it's really wonderful to be on the campus where they can, the hottest intellectual action is. And so we're right next to the computer science department, the physics department, and all these uh, um, hot academics. Hot in the intellectual sense. You know, <laughs> <laughs> There's beauty in thought. And. Um, so, as I say, yes, it's wonderful to be next to the university, and Cambridge is also a fascinating place to be. Uh, we're a bit low on landscape there, as uh, you can see straight to the Urals from, uh, from Cambridge, but to make up for that, it's, uh, there are all these um, entrepreneurs um, spun off by the university, and you know, wherever you live in Cambridge, probably your next door neighbour is just launching a company, and um, you know, it's a, it really is a, a fascinating and fun place to be. We've grown to nearly 100 researchers and uh, the 11 nationalities is uh, an out-of-date figure. I'm not sure what the up-to-date figure is, but you know, lots of, uh, <coughs> most of the European nationalities in the lab, and also a lot of interns. So we have more and more interns now. I think we must be uh, uh, more than four, uh, 40 interns a year. And we love to get um, your best students from European universities to come and work with us for three months. They have a great time, and we really enjoy having them. Okay, but uh, um, back to the uh, business in hand. <coughs> So um, I'm going to, to talk about this business of illusions, um, uh, inspiring theory, and finally all the way to algorithms in these four different categories. So I'm going to think about, uh, talk about perspective drawing first, then about um, uh, texture in images and how we can uh, um, exploit um, properties of texture for, for generating it artificially <coughs> and um, uh, shading also, again, some fascinating work in the psychophysics literature that, that dates back to the uh, early 70s that um, has kind of inspired um, some uh, ideas which finally have left a soft, led to software which you actually can, can buy in image editing suites. And finally, stereo vision, which is kind of really my, uh, the thing I'm most excited about at the moment that we're really uh, pursuing hard. This is the one where we're trying to persuade the uh, Microsoft as a company, stereo is the way to go. You know, we're not walking around the world with two eyes for nothing. There must have been, apart from it makes us look prettier, there must have been um, a good reason for having two eyes. So, okay, first of all, um, perspective. Now, you've probably seen these crazy um, 
drawings which um, were popularized particularly by Escher and here's a, a version by the um, uh, Swedish artist Reuters Vard which got onto a stamp in uh, Sweden so he, he did this for a you know a postal stamp and these pictures are crazy aren't they because you you look at a, a line like this one and you just can't assign a coherent meaning to the line uh, down at the bottom it looks like what we call a, a convex line that is it's a kind of fold in the material and the material is kind of sweeping away from you up to like the apex of a roof so that's a convex edge but then the same line when you follow it vertically up here it looks like what we call an occluding edge that is where one piece of material gets in front of another piece of material and it doesn't matter how you sweep up and down here you just can't reach a harmonious um, uh, conclusion. So I, I would say, you know, this is an impossible figure where the impossibility is kind of um, is hard coded into the figure. There's just no way you can eliminate it. It's uh, sort of somehow a deep um, inconsistency that uh, is ineradicable. They're kind of pleasingly annoying these things. And here are some uh, Escher versions of um, uh, figures that are impossible in a different way. Actually, um, you know, these are very complex figures, but you see the soldiers here walking up and up and up, forever walking up, or because the lazy ones, I suppose, might walk down and down. And similarly here with the water, how is it that the, ma the water manages to flow around this circuit without ever, um, without ever uh, rising? It's uh, falling, falling, falling all the way down the circuit. This, uh, and if you try to distill out the elements of this illusion, um, you can reduce it to a simpler figure like this, and this figure, the impossibility in this figure, which is uh, on another stamp, sw uh, Swedish stamp, is quite different from this kind of impossibility because actually, take it from me, if you go around trying to assign meanings to all the lines, you know, convex, occluding, and so on, um, you can do it. There's nothing wrong at that level. So the, the assignment that the lines are all meaningful lines in an unambiguous fashion, it's somehow the relief that's wrong. You know, you, you're doing this thing of going downhill, 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 and somehow getting back to where you started. So some kind of conservatism um, uh, property, physical property is being violated. And it's kind of annoying and fascinating all at once. And uh, here what we have another Escher um, uh, drawing. Instead of impossibility now we have ambiguity. The kind of ambiguity which is at its simplest form is uh, seen in what they call, what's called the Necker cube. So these cubes can pop in and out. Are they popping in and out for you? Sometimes it takes a while before. So this one, does it look convex? Who thinks it's sticking out towards you? And who thinks it's sticking in, away from you?